Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be discussing again about my Google Growth and Analytics. So we'll start up from where we left in the last video. So if you haven't watched my last video, you can just check out that last video. So moving on with today's lesson. So let's get started. So this was the topic. Uh, this was the last topic we covered in the previous video about effect of dissolved oxygen on growth rate. So we talked about two, uh, two bacteria of microbes, such as Azobacter and E. coli, and their uh, dependencies on oxygen percentage, and also nutrient percentage. So this is the graph shown as you can see. So these two are differently measured as Azobacter is a aerobic, aerobic organism, whereas E. coli is a facultative anaerobe. So these would have a more or less simple type of graph but due to its different nature, we can see some sorts of uh, differences between the two. So I've discussed about this uh, in my last video. So moving on with today's video. So this part we have already gone through. So this is the one uh, we need to talk about, which is the oxygen transfer rate. So as we have seen already that the oxygen bubble of the gas balloons with gaseous part, uh, gaseous part and remains in the liquid part for some time and, uh, and with time it is taken by the cell from the gaseous state. So this is the oxygen transfer from gas to liquid which is given by, so this is the gas, oxygen and uh, O2, this is the root gas. This is given by KLA in brackets C asterisk minus cl equals to otr so otr is the oxygen transfer rate so oxygen transfer rate is given by this thing and this the uh, transfer is o2 as you can see it's very evident so kl is uh, kl is the oxygen transfer coefficient and a is the gas liquid interface area so the area which uh, the oxygen uh, traverses during the entire process uh, whereas the entire KLA is the volumetric oxygen transfer coefficient or volumetric mass transfer coefficient. So KLA is the uh, mass transfer coefficient and C asterisk is the saturated DO concentration or saturated dissolved oxygen concentration. Whereas CL is the actual D, uh, dissolved oxygen concentration of the broth. So this is the saturated uh, concentration whereas the uh, CL is the actual O2 concentration in the uh, broth and N2 is the rate of oxygen transfer. So this is the rate of oxygen transfer or we can just write it write as OTR. So this is uh, how it stands for oxygen transfer rate. While we talked about its different uh, dependencies on oxygen uh, to the microbes in the previous video. So these are some sorts of uh, technical uh, technicalities that are related to the oxygen transfer rate. With this, so we'll talk about the oxygen uptake rate. So previously we studied about oxygen transfer rate. So oxygen oxygen transfer rate was dependent from gas to liquid, just constricted to or restricted to gas to liquid. So it moves from gas to liquid. This is called oxygen transfer rate. This is called OTR, alright, which we have studied already. And next step is the further, which is from uh, liquid to cell, which is called OUR which is the oxygen utilization rate or oxygen uptake rate all right so this is the air liquid phase this is the gas phase and this is the cell all right so this part is called OTR and this part is called OUR which is oxygen uptake rate which is given by QO2X which can be broadly written as mu GX by Y x by o2 x by this thing we know as we know already which is the yield coefficient which i've already discussed in the previous video so this is the yield coefficient and ug is the net specific gross or uh, specific or uh, gross specific growth rate all right and x is the cell concentration so x is always noted by cell concentration whereas if we find n that will be the cell number all right so this can be written as uh, QO2X or UGX by yield coefficient. So in this Q, QO2 is the specific rate of oxygen consumption. All right, so QO2 is the specific rate of oxygen consumption into X, which is the cell concentration, broadly written as this thing. 
So this was about oxygen uptake rate. All right. So moving on, moving on with this. So we'll talk about the relation between the two, the oxygen transfer rate and the oxygen utilization rate. So when oxygen uh, transfer is the uh, when oxygen transfer is the treatment step, uh, then the rate of oxygen consumption is equal to the rate of oxygen transfer. So this is the point that we need to remember. This is the most essential and important point uh, that uh, we have to remember, which is when oxygen is considered as the rate limiting step which is definitely the case and which is mostly the case in fact so when oxygen transfer is considered as a rate limiting step the rate of oxygen consumption is equal to the rate of oxygen transfer all right so these two becomes equal at these two conditions all right also as you can see these are the two thing these are this is the uh, OUR whereas the this is the OTR as you can this these two are equal here so also these are some of the facts this is the differentiation of uh, that thing the simple differentiation of that thing you can see and also facts are the growth rate varies linearly with oxygen transfer rate and oxygen transfer limitations so i'll read it again so in this case uh, the growth rate varies linearly with the oxygen transfer rate and the oxygen transfer limitations there are the limitations that these all options need to overcome as we see here that using oxygen enriched air or pure oxygen that uh, it is well, that is what it is preferred and operations under high atmospheric pressure uh, that is definitely these two are something that is very important for uh, getting a linear graph while the oxygen transfer is considered so these are two limitations that need to be solved for getting a straight line so moving on, we have another numerical for you guys. So you can just solve it. You can try solving this. So if you cannot solve this, I'll be helping out with the numerical as well. So if you cannot solve it, uh, you may write your doubts in the comment section. And if there are too many doubts, I'll make another video separately for these numericals only. And all the numericals that I have mentioned in all, all of these my videos. Now moving on with this. So this is the uh, this is the next part of microbial growth, which is the substrate limited growth. So which will be talking about the monoid equation. We have already mentioned about monoid equation in uh, two of my previous videos. Uh, so we'll uh, talk in detail what it is about and what are the things that we need to consider for this. So talking about substrate limited growth. So substrate limited growth so in this we are talking about the monoid equation which is represented by mu g which is the gross specific growth which equals to the u mu uh, mu m which is the maximum specific growth rate uh, into s which is the substrate by ks ks is the saturation constant or the half velocity plus s so this is the substrate growth limited growth so these are so there are a lot of factors that depend on the growth as i have already mentioned and there are a lot of dependencies on which it is considered so these are there are times where uh, there are limited limitations of growth on this the substrate so these are these is called the substrate limited, uh, limited growth so this is represented by monoid equation so that we need to remember so these are the substrate limited growth is so the less nutrients or uh, when the substrate is not present in abundance, growth depends on how the monoid equation stands. As you can see, so the monoid equation is uh, given as here. So it basically follows this pattern or this sort of uh, derivation uh, in this case whenever we go through substrate limited growth. So these are some of the facts that are related with the monoid equation. All right. So I talked about UM, UKS. UG, so UG is uh, generally half of UM. All right, so this is the gross, this is the maximum. So gross is equal to half of maximum specific growth. All right, and UG equals to UM when substrate is more than KS or saturation constant. All right, or definitely when the substrate is in abundance, then both of them equals or both of them is independent of each other. And also uh, when it is less, and UG equals to UM by KS into S. So moving on with this. So we'll talk about the substrate limited growth graph. 
So this is the effect of nutrient concentration on specific growth rate of glucoli. So this is the glucose concentration as we can see uh, in the x-axis and this is the growth rate in the y-axis. So the growth rate initially increases as we see here. So initially the uh, nutrient is in abundance and the growth rate is independent of the uh, nutrient concentration. So as you can see there is a steep line till here or you can say here. So as soon as it reaches the maximum value or the saturation value which is the line here then uh, the growth rate becomes stabilizes or there we don't observe any sort of steep growth or any sort of rapid excessive growth or we see equal number of growth uh, or and more or less equal number of deaths and the glucose concentration has also stabilized cause the grow uh, the nutrient medium starts to decrease from there on because uh, bacteria the micro microbes have already consumed a lot of nutrients which leads to depletion of nutrients from here on as it reaches the saturation point which is dependent on the glucose concentration so this is the substrate limited, uh, limited uh, growth which is denoted by monod equation as as explained so moving on from so here are some of the substrate inhibition uh, a formula that you can see so these are something that you have already studied in your junior classes so just a uh, uh, review of all of these so this is some sort of inhibition so this is a non-competitive uh, substrate inhibition this is competitive substrate inhibition so i've already covered all of these inhibitions in my separate video so you can just give it a watch uh, so uh, here are the all of them so this is a non-competitive substrate inhibition is represented by this and competitive substrate inhibition is represented by this and also we have a lot more which is non-competitive product inhibition so this is not substrate inhibition this is product inhibition so now you come to product inhibition this is a non-competitive competitive so these are represented by this some of the examples which are very important uh, whenever we are studying the subject the examples are from the Understanding through examples, so under non-competitive products inhibition, we have ethanol production from glucose by yeast, and ethanol acts as an inhibitor at concentrations above about five percent. So with this, so we have some more like inhibition by toxic compounds. So this is not uh, either by product nor or nor by substrate, which is normal inhibition by toxic compounds, which can be competitive inhibition. Uh, non-competitive inhibition and uncompetitive inhibition. Uh, competitive inhibition is given by this. Non-competitive inhibition is and uncompetitive is given by this. So I've all I've uh, I've done all of these in my videos, so you can just check them out and I've explained uh, thoroughly about this through graphs and everything. Uh, let's just talk about the last part, which is the death in presence of toxic compound, which is another part, which is the KD where you include the KD, which is the death rate, as we know. So inclusion of KD is important in this case only. So death in terms of toxic compounds. And another I have is one more, which is the logistic equation, as you can see. So this is just a, a combination of the monod equation with the growth equation. So this is the monod equation, as you can see, equation one, and equation two is the growth equation. So logistic equation we get the logarithmic slope. All right, our logarithmic curve, I mean. So batch growth curve assumes a symmodal shape and we observe a pretty much a hyperbolic curve. All right, uh, so logistic equation is basically a combination of monod equation and growth equation. And after all of these substitution of equation two and three and integrating after these, so we definitely, this equation describes symmodal shaped batch growth curve and the value of X as, uh, as uh, Asymptotic totally reached to the value of y s by x s zero plus s zero x zero. So this is the logistic equation we have done. Uh, this is uh, as I said, this is the combination of uh, this thing, monod equation and growth curve, growth equation. I mean. So also we have some more of them, some more important terms which as you can see the carrying capacity, and we have some more. Uh, equations here as well as these are some of the terms which are related with carrying capacity so we'll talk about this like this uh, which is the maximum cell mass we will denote as x 
infinity and which is equivalent to carrying capacity which is the maximum population size of the species that an environment can sustain also specific growth rate is related to the amount of unused carrying capacity so this is the one so specific growth rate is related to an amount of unused uh, carrying capacity and also integrating this we get this and also toxins generated by byproduct can limit the growth and reduce x infinity so this is which basically relates to the maximum cell mass which gets decreased which is the carrying capacity so moving on we have this continuous culture here so we can talk about this in a separate video as well so this is just a overview of this which says uh, continuous culture fresh nutrient medium is continuously supplied to a well stored culture in the product and cells are simultaneously withdrawn these are uh, very things in common so you can learn about them so let's just keep this video till here uh, we'll be discussing about more such topics under biochemical and bioprocess engineering so stay tuned till then and thank you for watching this video